This is from GLINET. This is the GLRM1 Remote KVM. This is an IP KVM. If you guys are familiar what those are, you know immediately the capability this has. I'm gonna show you how small this is and what capability it has. So it's very, very tiny, less than the size of a deck of cards. It's gonna have your ethernet. It's gonna have a power adapter input. It's gonna have a reset button on this side, USB 2, HDMI, and this little icon there, which is for keyboard and mouse. So let's talk about how that works. If you need remote access to a computer, this is all you have to do. So if you have, maybe it's a parent, maybe it's a relative, maybe it's a business system with that internet connection that we just showed, the redundant internet connection, and you wanna have remote hands capability, this gives you in a less than one C note package a way to connect to that. Now, there's different ways to do all the connections. I'm gonna walk you through the way I do it and it's pretty simple, but let's look at the rest of what's in the box here. So you're gonna have an ethernet cable, a USB type A to type C. You're gonna have a very small quick start guide and that's it. And honestly, that's really all you need. There are a couple enhancements that you can get when you're ready. So I take my device and open this up. I am gonna need an HDMI cable. It didn't come with an HDMI cable. And the one thing I would say that I dislike about it is that it doesn't have pass-through. Now, if it had pass-through to a monitor, I'd leave this thing connected all the time because the, the ability to have a hardware device connected to give your remote hands capability is awesome. So I plug the HDMI in. I'm gonna use my internet connection, which we just used a second ago, and I'm gonna plug that in over here. So I've got power in, ethernet. This is a cable, USB type C to type C, and that's gonna give me access to the keyboard here. So now what you're seeing is the GLI uh, uh, KVM. So this is the KVM application for managing but if I use this computer here, you're gonna see that it also works. You can see, uh, even with no internet on the actual PC, I was able to remote hands into it. So if I come over here and I go to blogs and I go to 3D printing, you can see some of my older reviews and other items with a bunch of ads around. So you can actually remotely access, I'm using my mouse here. There is no software for remote access on this computer. This Mac is actually being controlled and the keyboard and mouse are being virtualized. Now I can change it if I'm gonna watch a YouTube video and I wanted to watch one of his videos on here and I wanted the frame rate to be better. You'll see as I scroll, there's a little bit of jerkiness. What I can do is I can go up here to settings in the GLI KVM and I can change the quality and this changes the bit rate. Right now I'm about two megabit. If I change this to ultra high, it's renegotiating the connection with the GLI uh, KVM, the Comet. And now as I scroll, you'll notice it's a lot smoother scrolling here on this side. And then if I was to play one of these videos, don't wanna get a copyright issue, but if I was to play one of these videos, it's gonna be smooth. Now, there are some issues that I've had with this, specifically on uh, Mac, I like to use the Windows key to bring up the menus and things like that and to Windows tab around um, or Windows tilde to go between applications. So it has this virtual keyboard, but I can't do sticky keys for some reason. So that, that was a little bit annoying. There's a bunch of other really cool capabilities. It has a clipboard, it has file transfers. This thing has about five gigs of storage on it directly. So if you need to bounce files between it, you can actually do that through the device. Um, so that's the virtual media here you can see. I can also even go full screen, but I'm running it full screen on this computer here and I'm remotely controlling this. Now I'm only two feet away, but I could be 2,000, 4,000, 8,000 miles away controlling this computer. Now the person here can still control this computer and you can see how nice and smooth it is. This device, this is all we're using to do this is a very, very small device. Connectivity wise, I would have liked a couple other things. One, the firmware changes. Uh, that helped a lot because my experience when I had the lower firmware versions, the connections were slower, if they would connect at all. Um, it is a small Linux box inside. So as you get in there, you can actually jump into the terminal and they've left it completely unlocked, which is kind of cool. So you can bounce around there and see their Linux install. I don't know if it actually has the hardware and it's just not enabled, but I would love to see Wi-Fi support on this. I don't know if it actually has it. I don't think it does. 
Um, it does have two-factor authentication. I would also be interested if I could integrate this in my Google OAuth so I don't have to put a password in here, but I could use pass keys and other OAuth features. It doesn't just work with PCs uh, or Mac. It's pretty much any source that has an HDMI output. Now I'm gonna take, this was from last week. Um, there is a password here, so you can use it completely with your own routing and your own networking, but it does have that relay capability. So that's what I was using. It's going out and technically back in, uh, but it does have a two-factor uh, authentication and it does have direct IP networking. So if maybe you do your own VPN and you wanna go directly to this device, you could firewall it essentially from the internet and use it locally through your VPN and not have to deal with any of the routing that it comes with. So, but that is the Comet from GL iNet. A very small package, tons of cool and powerful features.